I've been waiting to make this video for a long time, but first I have to clean up a bit because as much as my office is gonna look great today, it doesn't always look beautiful. So the first thing I wanna mention is this Huawei Make You monitor. It is awesome. It's four by three, so it's a little taller, a little more square than your traditional monitor, and there's a lot of screen real estate to work with, and I love it for that. On top of being good screen, not a great screen, it's not as color accurate as the display on my M1 MacBook Pro, but it's still very, very good. You actually can't take it off the stand very easily, but the stand that's built in is the speaker, two USB ports, one USB-C port for power delivery too, so it's even charging my MacBook Pro. And yep, there's a headphone jack down there as well. This other monitor is just a cheaper LG 27 inch. It's like LG W770 or something. I don't know, it's got a really weird name, but it costs me around 350 to 400 bucks Canadian. And so far I actually have three of them and they're great. They're not perfectly color accurate again, but they're more than enough for content creation. And because I do a lot of like visual work, I usually choose 4K 60 over like a 1440p 120 hertz panel. If I was doing gaming, maybe I would have a different setup, but for what I do here, 4K over everything else. Anyway, like I said before, powering this whole situation is an M1 MacBook Pro. I love it. I bought this thing as soon as it came out, actually, not this one, my first one was broken, so I had to take it back, but I got this one very shortly after. Served me super well so far. I have the M1 Pro with the 16 core GPU. Oh no. Try a different shot, we'll try it over here instead. Oh yeah, um, so where was I? I have the 32 gigabyte RAM model with the 16 core GPU, and I have um, two terabytes of storage. I don't know, it's probably a little overkill. I mean, I have lots of SSDs, so one terabyte could have got me through, but I just know myself and I get busy. I get a lot of projects worked up on this computer and I just didn't want to be running into storage issues. There's only one real issue with this computer and that is the SD card slot. And I've actually heard this from some other creators too, but generally the SD card slot in my experience is working like six out of 10 times. So it's not working like four out of 10 times. I've got to plug it out, plug it in, plug it out, plug it in, plug it out, plug it in. And then generally to make it work, it's like I gotta shove it in and I have to hold it and almost like put more pressure than you would want to on an SD card reader. So the main charger on my desk is a OnePlus wireless fast charger. I do use OnePlus phones quite often, but just having a fast charger or a wireless charger on my desk is pretty handy. And it does keep the phone sort of in an upright position, which means that I can sort of glance over and see my notifications. For my secondary phone, because I'm one of those nerds, I have this little phone cushion. I actually got this at a Trade Rev press event years ago. So shout out to Trade Rev at Toronto vehicle business to business sharing platform that I never ended up writing about, but here's a shout out because this thing is unreal. I hate cables falling off my desk. So whenever I unplug my displays from my MacBook, there's are two dangling cables and that's why I have this guy. It's called a quirky cable organizer, but it holds a lot of cables, but it has a nice weight so it doesn't get pulled by the cables off the desk. So whenever I unplug my HDMI from my laptop, I can sync it in here and I'll know the next day when I plug my laptop back in, the cable will just be waiting there. SD card readers. This one is my favorite. It's from a company called Logix and the cable kind of goes in here and it just comes in and out. So you're never like without a cable and it's also not plugging directly into the Mac and blocking all your other ports, which is super handy. On top of that, it's got micro SD card, SD card, two USBs, USB A's, USB C and an HDMI pass through. So when I'm on the go with like the iPad mini or something, I use this little SD card reader, SD cards on that side mini SD cards on that side. The only issue is whenever it's in like a MacBook because the ports are so close together, it's the only thing you can have plugged in unless you have like a MacBook Pro with ports on either side or MagSafe. But I also have this one for the lightning items. So for iPads, iPhones, on the go, little iPad, iPhone SD card reader. Moving back over here, I have a vertical laptop stand, which is actually really awesome. It's a new addition to the desk. It's just like a steel sort of heavy base that holds four laptops or tablets, and it's just a great way to keep all those organized. And I actually have the iPad mini even jammed in here too, so. Behind the displays back there is a Nanoleaf light strip. It's not the tiles or anything, it's just a regular like LED sort of silicone light strip. Really great. To human eyes, it's very bright and vibrant and colorful and has lots of different modes and presets that you can build within the app. The only real issue is if you do a lot of filming yourself, it does flicker depending on what brightness you have it at. I like to have it in there because the light in the back adds a nice depth to the scene, but 
it does flicker, so if you are planning to use it for filming, it might not be the best option. The last really unique desk accessory that I have over there is my sort of light bar lamp. It's just a cheap thing that I found on Amazon, but I chose it because it looked highly adjustable, not only in form, but also three different color temperatures and variable dimnesses, because after the debacle with the flashing light strip, I figured having the more options might be for the best for filming. And so far it hasn't let me down. And it also does this. Well, A, holds my headphones, whatever I'm using at the time, but it also can turn sideways like that, which totally changes up the vibe and is a fun time. I don't know, it's not that exciting, but it's been a good lamp for me. And uh... okay, now we should talk about the desk itself. It's from Ikea, both legs and desktop, but I got them separately. I originally just had the top with regular sort of adjustable legs, but work was having a liquidation sale at one point and it ended up snagging the standing desk and converting it over to fit this wooden Carlby top that I've stained espresso. So far, it stood up to the test of time pretty well. Oh, and actually one of the coolest things about the IKEA standing desk, because I'm sure you could add this to any desk, but it's a form of cable management. It just uses a, I guess I would call it like a mesh or a net. So it just pins up at all four corners and in the middle, and then you slide all your cables in and the net just holds them pulled up tight against the bottom of the desk. Really convenient. Everything is organized and looks great. I mean, if you go underneath and look up, it's not perfect, but from like 90% of viewing positions, it's organized. For my keyboard and mouse, I'm using the MX Master 2 mouse. I will upgrade to a 3 at some point. Alex has one and hers is way better than mine. And I have the MX Keys keyboard. Ideally, I'd like to go to the, down to the Keys Mini at some point, just because I don't really need a numpad. But for now, this keyboard has served me well, except for one thing. I tried to clean it at one time, and this is the key I started with, and it was never able to go back on, so now I have to touch this nub to go left and right. It's a little annoying, but I love chiclet keyboards over mechanical, which I know people will probably roast me for. I do have a custom mechanical keyboard that I built myself. I just, I don't know, the, the depth of the typing is too much for me, and it being raised off the desk that much, also too much for me. I'm a really low profile typer. I mean, I use an iPad, typed on the screen for a long, long time. And then I had the 12 inch MacBook, also a very shallow keyboard. So like Stockholm syndromed into like uh, chiclet style keyboards. And so far beyond the Apple one, which is really, really expensive, uh, I found this to be the sort of best option. But yeah, that's sort of my everyday items. I've got a few other things in here that we could go over. You know, I've got my Ikea sort of thing down here, all my charging bricks and hard drives, some old phones, other knickknacks in here. This is where I just sort of charge everything. It's a big power bar, although this USB part is broken, which is a little annoying. Still handy. I've got my cameras up here. Some more camera accessories, although most of that stuff is out in the living room and sort of the studio section. But the cool thing about this shelf is it's where I do my top downs. So with this like sort of camera arm, I can clamp it onto the shelf up there. The camera will point down here. And once I clean all this off, that's where I do a lot of my unboxings, you may have noticed. What else? Oh yeah, we have this little studio area over here. Let's get some light in there. Um, this is where I do a lot of the photos. If I want to use a backdrop or something, I've got more colors out in the living room. But yeah, this is just Alex's old tiny desk and then a couple of lights from Ikea and Amazon. And then this is an Aperture P60C. And uh, maybe the last thing to mention, I guess, would be my chair. <laughs> but it's a Herman Miller um, sale chair, S-A-Y-L, and it is really comfy. Not as comfy as like the other ones, but I got it used for like 230 bucks and well worth that. Also, like I said, I don't really do a lot of gaming anymore, but I do have sort of a gaming slash video editing PC over here. Bunch of Noctua fans, a 3060 that I just picked up the other day because my old graphics card, which was a 5700, uh, broke. 32 gigabytes of RAM, um, a Ryzen 7 3800X. That's about it, I don't know. If you guys wanna see maybe a little bit more video, you wanna see, I don't know, maybe more about what I would use for traveling or my everyday carry, we can get into more specifics or maybe we could do one in the studio of all the filmmaking gear that I use. But if you wanna see anything like that, uh, let me know in the comments below and let me know, you know what you guys like, what you didn't like here and uh, you know, if you wanna learn more. Oh, I guess I should mention too, if you wanna learn more about this PC and why it's orange, check out the video on the Tech Stuff with Alex channel that me and Alex made about customizing her PC and it will all be explained there. Peace out, I'll see you guys in the next one.